Hello, Yvonne. How are you? Hi, Rhonda. Hello, Connie. This is not a jewelry live. I have to like save my forces for Sunday, right? Because I'm only going to be doing lives once a week. And then I'm going to be doing kind of educational and motivational lives throughout the week. This is one of those. Um, but I'll give you some sneak peeks, right? So these were Debonair Dazzle. These were our fan favorite, right? Those will be on the show. And then I have to show you some of the vintage goodies because I have so much fun digging in my little buckets of fun here, right? Because big earrings are in, girls, right? What up? Hi, Sheila. Hey, Mickey Joe. What up? And then, I, of course, I have to give something nautical for the nautical fans. Hello, Karen. How are you? Holla, holla. Um, so this is more of a uh, motivational talk, right? Look at this heart. This will be on the show, too. I love, 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 love this heart. Seriously. <laughs> Hi, Sue. How are you? Hello, 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 everybody. If I missed anybody, I'm so sorry. My cruise was fabulous. I had a great time. Um, the best thing that I have done is the friends that I have really made, right? And of course, half pint, boom. Like he had a ball, right? He was playing bingo and everything with everybody. Um, hi, Lori. So this is not a sales show. This is more of a motivational type thing. Uh, Cause I, I like, I really sat and so I'm one of those deep thinkers, right? And like I find, and you guys should figure out where your thinking spot is. Hi Anna, hi Deb. You guys should all figure out where your thinking spot is, right? So like mine is if, like what feels good to you? Like if you're getting a big blowout, right? With your husband or one of the kids and you need to blow off steam and just get your head straight, where's your thinking place? So mine is usually the shower. I can take up to a two hour shower. I had to have a bigger water heater put into my house or it's in my car driving. I seem to do like my best, clearest thinking there. I don't know why, but that's what it is. So, um, hi Jody, how are you? Hey Brenda, hi Brittany. So this is a um, uh, not be a warrior, don't be a worrier. And so what I have found is that we all like wanna think about all the negative, right? We're all like, boom, boom, boom. <laughs> thinking chair, like in Blue's Clues. Oh man, thinking chair. Um, did you send out a text, babe? No, you want Yeah. So what I want to talk about right now is the fact that we are so, we are our biggest enemies, right? And I know that as a woman, I know that I am so hypercritical of myself and things that I do. And I have to catch myself all the time of being critical of others. And I realize that I only hinder myself, right? So that like I'm the one holding myself back from everything. And I want you guys to realize that there is nobody holding you back in life except for yourself, right? So we choose to go ahead and think the negative and we choose to want to place blame. And, and instead of us placing this blame and doing the negative, what we need to do is we need to start analyzing and fixing, okay? So we need to be a problem solver, not a problem finder. And what really typically happens, especially in any business, is that we start second guessing ourselves and we start saying, oh my gosh, you know, I don't have enough viewers. Oh my gosh, um, you know, I just can't buy inventory. And instead of thinking like that, I want you guys to change the thinking because that's what I had to do to become successful and to overcome the negativity in my life and, and my negativity because I am a born negative person, right? Michael always says, um, he's always the positive one out of all of us, out of the, our relationship. And we make a good balance. And I like to say I'm a realist, but really I'm real hard on myself. And I don't want people to put that into their head as the negative. And what I found is that we never fail at something unless we quit trying. And I don't want anybody to quit trying in this business because they think that there's something that they can't do. This is very doable and it is very something that is applicable in all of our lives. And so when we see a problem, and I think it was Bob Heilig, I'm not sure, that had this quote, and he said, you know, successful people see opportunities and unsuccessful people see obstacles. And so what we find ourselves doing, hey, Lorraine, is seeing the problem always and not seeing any solutions, right? So I want to talk about it. 
The first thing that I always suggest that you do is when you really have this problem, and the other thing we never want to do is point the finger at ourselves. We never, ever, ever, ever look in the mirror, right? So what we first have to do is look at what we're doing to create the situation. So let's say that you are, and I'm, I'm going to give for instances, and if you guys want to give me something, I will give you something that we should look at and to focus on. And so uh, I want to say that the biggest one is, is I'm not getting enough viewers, right? So then we want to blame somebody. Well, this person's live at the same time as me. So is that a problem? If you think that that is a hindrance to your business, it isn't. Then you guys, what we need to do is we always have to look at us. Hey, Sue. Hi. Hi, Patrice. Hello, Jen. Um, no drama, right? But, but really, what our problem is is always us, right? We always want to say that it's somebody else. Like, it's my upline. It is, you know, this girl. She's taking my customers. It is this. It is that. And really, the problem is, is us. It's, it's not about anybody else. Well, Brenna, that's why, like, I have my team the way it is. Because we all share a customer base, right? And that's why it's a lot easier to start with somebody that has a, a chemistry amongst their team than it is to say, you know, boom. But the other thing that we always do is shoulda, woulda, coulda, right? Shoulda, woulda, coulda. Coulda signed up with her, didn't. Shoulda signed up with this person, didn't. Shoulda done this for my live and didn't. And, and that is like in the past. Yes, it's important to recognize what you coulda, shoulda, woulda done. However, it is important to realize that now you need to do it. And so what I'm saying is that we need to get the problems. Hello, everybody. Hi, Dame Diamond Dolls. We need to get our problems out. And then we have to see why it's our problem. Because it's not my upline's problem. It's not my husband's problem. And we have to realize why I have created this problem for myself. So if you are going to recognize a problem, you have to recognize that it's your problem and it's on you. It's something you did. Nobody did this to you, right? Well, thank you, Jennifer. It's the heart. It's not me. It's my, my beautiful purple crystal heart. And so what, what you need to do is you need to analyze. And so the other thing we have a hard time doing is taking information in, right? Somebody gives us a solution and we're like, I know better than that, right? I don't ever feel that I know better than any single person. When somebody says even something to me on my team, they could have just started. That doesn't mean that because I've been doing this longer that I know better, right? I do know when something is way off base. And so we have to be able to take in information. We have to be able to recognize that we are our own problem. And we have to recognize that it's only a problem if we're not going to do anything about it. Because that's what we tend to do. We self-analyze and we say that we're an issue. And, you know, that somebody else did this to us. And we are not allowed or we do not allow ourselves to take, uh, you know, responsibility. Now, when I started this business, I made a lot of mistakes. And when you start a business, you're going to. You have to learn from those mistakes. But a mistake only makes me stronger right? Because I'm learning from it. And if you are just taking those mistakes and bashing yourself or bashing your appearance or bashing, you know, I was very uncomfortable at the weight that I was. Currently I'm down, I think like 43 or four pounds. Um, and I'm so happy that I did it and finally took the initiative. And that's what this is about. Get off your bottoms and take some initiative. You can sit in a cry, you, you know, your cry chair all day long, and uh, you, can, you can do that, but the problem is, is that you need to have faith. You need to have faith in yourself. You need to have faith in the thing that got you into this position in the first place. If you have a relationship and you decide that, um, you know, and, and you're in a marriage, because I think that that's the common thing that, that people feel that we fail at. And the thing is, is that not that I'm a counselor or a therapist. I give that disclaimer right now. Um, I am a paparazzi independent consultant, consultant ID 95712. Um, I am a, an elite consultant. I am within the top five in sales in the company where I was last year. I don't know where I fall this year. Um, and I will say, well, for two years. And I will say that I had to do a lot of self-analyzation, but the way that I, and the most places that I see breakdowns is in marriages. And that's because 
um, people grow apart instead of growing together. And there's not compromise and there's not communication and there's no self-realization. And I had to take that first in my own marriage, right? Because obviously when you get married and we're at a later age in life, you are adjusted and you don't, um, you're set your ways, right? You have a one way of doing it. You have one way of doing this. And I want to tell you that you always want to take and look at the situation. And did I say, oh, it's time for a divorce? No, I said it's time to go to a therapist, right? And so when you guys are running into problems in your business, do you say, well, I should have done this. I should have or could have done that. No, what you should be doing is saying, what can I do to fix this, right? And this is my own fault. This isn't because my upline didn't give me direction. This isn't because my upline this. It isn't because um, they don't share my show enough or my family won't show up, all right? I learned a long time ago, although I do rely on Michael, but when I was in that mindset that I only rely on myself, right? I had, if I want to feed myself, I should know how to get my own food. And that's something we prepare our children to do. Hi, Gabby. How are you? Hi, Diane. And so, hi, Tony. And so I want you guys to start preparing yourself for business. Do not accept things as failure. You are never a failure unless you quit at something. And as long as you don't quit, you haven't failed, right? It's like the stock market. You invest, you invest, you invest. I did not lose money. If the stock market crashes, I did not lose money until I have pulled my money out. I have not lost money in a business until I quit. And so, hi, Angela. Hi, Chrissy. <laughs> and so, I want to say that you have not lost anything or failed at anything until you failed yourself by not finding the answers and making it better. So for instance, I wanna tell you guys problem solving. So if you see that there is a problem, and I don't wanna call it a problem, we need to find the solutions. And so the solutions always lie within yourself. When you guys are saying that I don't have enough people on my live, what is your appearance like on your live, okay? Are you happy and upbeat? I have a lot of life tragedies. And if I do talk about anything, I always have a positive attitude towards it, right? That's right. If you close your own door, then you fail. So I have had a lot of tragedies. I do not share a lot of the things that happen in my life. Not because I don't want to or because I can't think positively about them. Because I don't want to bring other people down. And so having an attitude of of waking up and saying i'm going to conquer this or i'm going to kill it and when you have that failing attitude i suggest you go to your thinking place and i suggest that you think about how to solve that problem and make a list right these are things that i could do different to make my life better i could be consistent because there's so many informational videos out there no matter what business you are hey Benet. <laughs> hi jennifer there are so many informational videos out there that if you haven't watched them and you haven't sat there and I say, yeah, critique yourself, but critique yourself only because you're going to change it. Not because you're going to say, I suck, right? Because I mean, I look and I look back and I say, boy, I sucked. But you know why I sucked? I sucked because I didn't want to listen to information that was being given to me. I didn't go out and I didn't seek new information and I would let myself accept defeat. Yeah, I only sold six things and, you know, uh, that that I, I can't do this. And so what I want everybody to do is realize that that you you are your own worst enemy. And people say, well, I just wasn't cut out for this. No, you just didn't want to work at it, you know, or I failed because I had a crappy upline. No, you failed because you didn't get the information you needed or you say, I just can't get enough viewers and I, it's because this consultant is live at the same time. I'm telling you for viewers, you need to have a good appearance. Like, and this applies to everything. And you have to, you have to be happy, okay? I don't care, I've gone live and I've literally had a screaming match with my kids two minutes before. But I know I'm gonna come on here and I'm gonna see my friends. And I know I'm gonna come on here and um, somebody's gonna share some awesome news with me. Like they found their long lost sister. Or, <clears throat> you know, because people know on my show, and this is the fault that we have, that I don't accept 
any negativity. And if somebody says it, I say, gee, you know, I, I feel really bad about your situation because you have to know how to flip it off, right? Because you seem insensitive if you guys are just saying no, no, no. You have to know how to flip it off, right? And, and you don't want to seem like you're insensitive. You just say, you know what? Because me personally, I don't watch the news. Um, I, there's nothing positive. Half of it's lies. That's just my opinion. Um, and opinions aren't worth really much, right? Except for to ourselves. But it keeps freezing. Michael? Okay. Hang on. Am I there? Yeah, you're back. Okay, Michael says I'm back. You're back. So, I'm not sure what happened. I was having an issue all day. He's going to have to figure it out. And, and Michael has a hard time letting go of his phone because I was going to go live from his phone. But he needs, in order for Michael to sleep, it's like his teddy bear. And so um, Michael sleeps with his phone, like in his hand, sitting up, watching the, you know, like literally he'll be sleeping with his eyes shut, snoring, and he'll have his phone in his hand, not like resting on him, like up in the air, like he's watching it. It's the most bizarre thing that has ever happened. Are you watching my personal messages? We have somebody signing up. Yeah. Okay. So um, what I want to tell you guys is that in my life, in what I do, when I heard that saying, successful people see opportunities, what does that mean? Okay, I don't have money to buy jewelry, but I have the opportunity to make money by opening up my cabinet and selling something on eBay to have that money, right? Hello, Jessica. And so um, I, I don't have enough viewers, but I have the opportunity to get more viewers if I and more positive. And if I work on a schedule, right? And I always try to explain that when a new consultant is starting out and they think that they're going to haphazardly go live now and haphazardly going to go live then. And I'm like, you know, I don't go to the grocery store that isn't open every day at nine o'clock. Because if I get off work and I drive out of my way to go to that grocery store, then I expect it to be open. And so I want everybody to take that opportunity because I, I get a lot of messages and I try to help as many people as I can, but my, my sole focus has to be to my team. But I realized in order to help more people that if I did these lives on my business page and kept other tree, you know, um, trainings specifically to my team, that these, this, this is the type of training that I thought that people really needed uh, based off of their messages. So I always get the message and then um, they'll, I'll, I'll give you a for instance, and they'll say, you know, I just can't get uh, like viewers to come back or I can't get viewers on my live. And then I'll go, well, what's your, I'll, I'll, I'll like take a sneak peek at their profile. And their profile says they work at paparazzi accessories, not their business name. And then it says it has a picture of their cat or it has a picture of them 20 years ago. Um, and, you know, I'll even try to help them and I'll say, you know, like you, there's no, recognizability you're in a people business and people need to know who you are and then like I'm curious if I did take the time to answer the question you know usually it's Michael answering questions not me then I will go look a couple weeks later and I'll look and it's the same thing and I'm like okay well I'm glad that I took my time out of my day because what you guys have to realize is that when somebody does take the time to answer you when somebody does take the time to call you on the phone um, they all have important things and I'll, I'll say you know, my husband's dying. If I take time out of my day to answer your message and I have a team of 364 people, uh, then I'm taking time away from my family. I am taking time. We all are in this gimme, gimme society and we don't have any attitude for gratitude. And so, oh, I'm so glad. Um, we all live in this you owe me society. Like, oh my gosh, I was sitting in the airport and I'll tell you when I sometimes when I go to paparazzi I like to sit in the shadows right I don't wear a name tag at some of the things um, I don't wear my necklace I don't look like this you will not see me looking like this I won't tell you what I look like because I'm hiding for a reason and so <laughs> uh, I like to listen to what people are saying and we were sitting in the airport and there were three girls sitting behind me and P Michael isn't on camera so people don't recognize him either and I was listening and they were complaining that when we were on the cruise, 
that the person that was their upline didn't make it a point to seek them out. And I'm thinking, okay, first off, that person had like 200 people on that cruise. And second off, that ship is a big ship, right? And like, you know, it was their vacation too. That might've been the only vacation they got and they had their family with them. And I was listening to these girls run it down and I'm like, gosh, you know what? I would hate to think that they have no understanding, like they thought it was owed to them, right? And so what I'm saying is that what you want to do is that you have to have understanding. You have to think in other people's shoes. And, and the same thing goes with this is a business, right? So you as a seller of any product have to think about what your customer thinks, have to think about what your customer would like, have to think about what your customer sees. Um, and as they were saying this, I knew the person that they were speaking of, and I knew how much time and effort that person puts into their business, their team, and the environment, and I thought it was really unfair. And it was one person, and then that person spread to two more people. Now those other two people, who probably weren't even thinking that the whole time, start this negative conversation. And I'm just kind of looking at Michael, rolling my eyes, and you know, I was just, I was really taken back by it. And so I want you guys to think that we are independent and you are a business. I don't care what company you work for. I don't care what rules you have to abide by. I am an independent consultant. You are an independent person. And you, as an independent person, need to take on the responsibility of realizing you're the problem. If you don't have viewers, you're the problem. If you aren't talking about your business, you're the problem. And I was explaining to my team today, if I am recruiting somebody, I am not getting them to sign up. I am sharing a gift because this is a gift that was given to me. It was very hard. I felt and knew that I sucked my problem. It was all me. I would hear advice and think it didn't apply to me. It applied to me. And I was not seeking out information on my own, okay? I can't say I wasn't trying. I was a part of every event. I did every vendor event you could possibly think of. I was doing lives. I was doing home parties. And so, I had to look at myself finally after the three months that I sucked and realize the problem was me. I was not being myself. I was not trying to find out new information because believe it or not, whether you like what somebody has to say, it may spark an idea in you. And the problem is, is that we are consistently thinking with our hearts and not with our heads. And it's natural, right? You see that poor kid with cancer commercial. How many people get those calls every day? And how many people feel bad telling, you know, St. Jude's that you can't give them 10 bucks? Like, I sometimes am like, oh, God, it's St. Jude's as a kid. And I'll give it, Michael used to um, donate blood regularly. And I remember when we first started dating, they called him the Red Cross. And they said, I was just telling you about this blood drive. And, you know, and so Michael... Um, was like, you know, I'm really sorry, I'm busy. And they're like, sir, they're like, I just want to tell you that you have extra platelets in your blood and one pint of your blood could save so many children. That was it for Michael. Every single time they called him, he went and donated blood. And I'm not talking like, you know, oh, once a month. I'm talking every single week. I'm like, dude, He's like, I can't go get the groceries. I got to donate blood, you know, because we think with our heart and not with our head. And we need to start thinking with our head because thinking with our heart only says that's an obstacle. I'm not the problem. It's their fault. And we're our own problem. We are our own fault. And we need to start not blaming God, not blaming our sponsor, not blaming uh, paparazzi, we need to blame us, okay? If you are not getting help and guidance, blame you. You didn't do your research. 
Everybody that joins this company should do the research. I already told you it is not your upline's responsibility to give you information. It is only their responsibility to inform you of compliance and where to find it. I am not supposed to give any compliance advice. In the elite team group, I cannot ask compliance questions. They tell me email compliance, right? I can only give brevity of what compliance aspects are. And so the, um, the, the, Harsh aspects are, if you're not getting help, you made a decision based on your heart, right? You, the warrior, were worried, this person's not going to like me anymore. Um, you know, but that's my cousin. It'll cause a rift in my family. Uh, what, what, those other people that are friends with her, they're not going to like me anymore. And I want to tell you, be a warrior. This is my business. And I am going to do my research and join the right person. This is my life. And I am going to make sure that I get viewers on. And I'm not going to expect my upline to come share my show to do it. This is my business. And so if I'm not ordering, I'm not going to sit and complain about it. I'm going to go sell something I'm not using, like one of my six coach purses. Now, I don't have six coach purses. But I'm going to go sell something so that I can keep my business going. And so it's going to take, it's a large flip of your head. And I had to do it because when you have so many things weighed down on you, I was not going to be that person that laid in bed and wouldn't do anything about it. Okay. I did, trust me, when I first heard the news, I was a constant tear mess. I walked around crying everywhere I went. Um, you know, I'll tell you what threw me off in the younger years, which I killed a good portion of my life being an alcoholic um, was my father passing. And I kept blaming God. How could God take my dad away? And how, you know, and, and that was my reasoning in my head as to being upset. And that's not the way to think. Now I can look and say, how many people don't have, know who their father even is? How many people live, grew up in a foster? How many people never got a hug from their dad or was told that they loved him? How many people never had a dad sit down and say, you are worth more? I had a father that loved me and I had 19 years given to me as a gift from God. And it takes a lot to switch that thinking. And I am trying to give you guys that basis. Yes, I have a sick and dying husband. I have troubled children in different aspects because of that. However, I have a husband and I met the love of my life. And so what you need to do is start taking that negative and removing it and putting the positive in. And it's a whole different aspect, right? You are no longer a victim. Let me tell you about what a victim is. When you live in a victim mindset, you are constantly waiting for somebody to make it better for you. And let me tell you that people are not in this world to make life better for you. It is a me, 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 me society. And so if you are going to wait for somebody, and I have had terrible things happen to me. I have had um, persecution, wrongful persecution. I mean, I won't get into the list of things. And if I sat there and said, woe is me, woe is me, I'd be sitting on that couch, collecting my welfare, waiting for somebody to get things better for me. I was over $300,000 in debt when I started this journey. I was a hot mess express thinking, how do I tell my kids you're going to lose your dad, your house, your school, the friends that you've made, the pool in the backyard, the fire pit that, you know, I didn't even know if I could take care of the dog. That's how strapped we were. And if I lived in that victim's mentality and I was messaging all these charities, you need to help, you need to help, then I would just be sitting there waiting for somebody to make my life better. And I'm telling you, don't sit there and wait for somebody to make your business better, your life better, your marriage better, your relationship with your children better. You make your life better. Take and switch your thinking. When you have a problem with your husband, and we all do this, right? It's his fault. Like Michael even knows. He's like, oh, it's actually your fault. However, I want you to always analyze what your role is and solutions to making that relationship better. And, and I think that that is where we fall short in life. 
<laughs> right? I know, and um, one of my children had something terrible, more than one, but it, this summer, I, I will say that one of my, my daughter was hit by a car. And she was at school, she's a college student, and she um, had terrible injury to her leg. And she had surgery, she was on a bike, she was at school, and you know how it goes at colleges in a college town that pedestrians have the right of way no matter what. Um, and she was there on a complete full ride scholarship. And I will tell you the lesson that I give to my kids every day because if I sat and I said, this happened to me, and my father died and I had no dad. And don't get me wrong, I did that, I did that. But you know what it did? I sat still in one place in life. I had no growth and this world is full of opportunity. This world is what we need and not take for granted. And so I always tell my kids, if you wanna be a victim, be a victim, but you're gonna be unhappy the rest of your life. And people tell me all the time, you know, I'm just really depressed. You're depressed because you choose to be depressed. You are focusing on everything negative, and I don't care if you just have to look at the fact that you woke up that day, you did. I look at people that, and I get very frustrated, right? And again, alcoholic, a recovering alcoholic, and I look at people that come into my house and start complaining about their aches and pains. And my mother's been in a wheelchair for years. Hello, Luana. And so when I'm sitting there and I'm looking at that and they come in and they'll be like, oh, you know, my knees, they just hurt me so bad. I'm looking at my husband who walks with the walker and barely can get around. And I'm looking at my mother who has no legs at all and is basically a paraplegic. And I'm thinking, what? But, but what I'm saying, Brenda, is you should have thanked God for the gift. And that's one thing that we forget to do is be thankful. And... And, and be thankful for what we had, because would you have rather have never had her? Would you have rather never have spent that time? Because they always say, would you rather have loved or you know found the love of your life or never loved at all? And regardless of the amount of time that I have. And I feel like I've been given this gift of God because he was supposed to die in October of 2017. And I think that if I would have had a bad attitude, not only would I have been saying, God, your gift isn't good enough. But number two, I would probably have made this man die. Because if I'm making him feel guilty over it by me being upset about it, then he's going to have a negative mind state and positive mind. I don't care. I've seen people, they've been cured. Think about the mom who can lift the car off of their kid because they have the adrenaline. You know, is she going to sit there and cry because the car's on her kid or is she going to actually do something? It is fight over flight. It is warrior over warrior. And we need to adopt those practices in our life to be successful at anything. And if you want to find happiness, you have to make it happy. Life is going to happen. Crap is going to fall down on top of you. I had a really rotten year with a lot of bad things happened to me. I was lying in a bed for two months. I had the left side of my body basically almost in paralysis. It was an effort for me to walk down the stairs, to think about walking my dog down to the end of the block, which is 500 feet, was like, put me in tears. And I am going to say that we, you know, I didn't look at it and say, I give up. I sought out different doctors. And when one told me I was crazy, or another one told me it was because I was depressed because my husband was dying, or it was psychosomatic because he was dying. And I was like, you know, empathy. Um, I didn't listen because I had this way of thinking and I gained the confidence in myself to go out and find the answers. If I had listened, I would have sat in that bed because they told me nothing was wrong with me. I would have sat and continued to gain weight. I have 30 more pounds to lose, I'm gonna lose it. And people looked at me and they go, well, I thought you would cheat because you're on the cruise. And I said, uh, no. Why am I gonna set myself back when I'm on the road forward? And so I say to you, when somebody says you can't do something, what are you listening for? Why are you being the worrier about what that person thinks? You are in control of your destiny and you are in control of your life and you need to take it and you need to walk. Not crawl, you need to walk. And when you see it and you start thinking differently, you need to run, right? Because I am not done giving. I am not done meeting goals and helping people. And I am not done with my husband 
And I am not going to be not thankful what I have in my life. And and yes, I had a really crappy year. Do you think that I went into, into 2020 and said, gee, I hope my year is better than last year's because last year sucked. No, I didn't even think about all the things that happened to me. I said, I cannot wait to take over this year because we are the ones that are causing our own depression. We are the ones that are bringing the people down around us. We are the ones that are the self-doubters. I have people say to me, they're afraid to do this business because they're afraid to go live. You are afraid to be in control of your own life. You are afraid not to punch a clock anymore. You are afraid to make your own money and not be reliant on the welfare or the child assistance or the state medical insurance. You're afraid to do it on your own. And I'm saying find your inner strength. I'm saying be your own champion. Be a warrior and not a worrier. You have this. You have this in the bag. I am guilty of all the things that I talked about. I am not better than anybody. And I never am now. Because you're one of those people, I'm not. But I have a duty to try to communicate this to you, to get you up off the couch, to get yourself off that chair, to get yourself a solution to happy. And because I found it, I want to give it to you. I love what I do. I love selling jewelry. I love my friends that I have made through this. I have loved the people that have become my family. I love that I am in control of my day. I love that I can be with my kids because that was the biggest kill trip when I worked in those law firms. I feel like I'm missing my whole kids' lives. When are you gonna do something about it? When are you gonna make that change for yourself? Are you going to sit there and say and feel the guilt or are you going to find something to take that guilt away and actually put it into actions? I always have kids on every jewelry show. However, I have a website with over 10,000 different items. There are over four or 500 different children's items on there. It is Marissa's bling on a budget.com. Um, I will be live Sunday at 4 p.m. Eastern. I have a YouTube channel. It is Marissa's bling on a budget. Uh, I have a huge live in which we're giving out a Vintage Z. This is my uh, share prize for Sunday. I have uh, a Bring a Friend prize, which there's probably going to be a couple more coming, but I don't like to ruin any surprises, right? I only go live once a week. Right now I am working on team development and bettering myself for my team uh, and bettering them, the ones that want it, right? Because everybody wants to be in the back and, and, and blame somebody. And so what I've learned is I can only help those that want the help. And that's why the 73 people here, you know, they're getting something off of what I'm saying. I feel like job well done, right? I don't want you to live in the misery that I've lived in. If you guys are an alcoholic or an addict, I want you to know there's a better life out there. There really is. I live a great life now and I can't imagine why I wanted to be numb and not look at all the gifts I had. If you guys are sitting there and listening to somebody negative, if you are living in what you deem as a bad marriage, if you are having a bad work environment, excuse me, I want you to know, and that's exactly why I did this, because I had so many responses from my last live that you guys are in control of this. You make this, not, not you know, I, I'm telling you, the guilt that I lived with for the things that I did, and they always say that that's the worst thing about when you get sober because you can't get out of your own head. They say it's dangerous to be alone, right? And I know a lot of people haven't done this, but I feel like AA training is training for the world, like it should be for the world. And so they tell you, do not be alone. And do not be alone with your thoughts. Put your headphones on, read a book, call your sponsor. And so I know that the most dangerous things we can be in, and I know a lot of the people that watch me that that's why they're watching me because they get themselves out of their own head and I put it in a positive light. And I wanna say that I lived in that negativity. That was the fear of being sober was having to rationalize and realize all the things that had happened in my life. And I'm gonna tell you that was foolish of me because 
I would have sat and lived with that guilt the rest of my life that I didn't have time to spend with my kids. If my husband had gone into a home like they wanted him to. And I'll tell you that that was really where the fight came out in me when Michael did one of his stays at the hospital and I walked in and they brought a social worker in to talk to me. And then they brought an occupational therapist in to talk to me. And then they brought a doctor in to talk to me and told me that I could not take care of my own husband and he needed to go into a home two years ago because somebody needed to be with him on round the clock care. And I'll tell you that that was really where the flip happened with me. Uh, yes, AA was a big part of it. I had been sober a number of years at this point. But when they looked at me and I saw this big, I mean, I love my husband more than life itself. Okay. I love God first, my husband second, my children later. Okay. It's like those three and then probably my team. <laughs> um, but when they looked at that, that was the fear for me. It was the fear of, I can't let my husband go to a home. I can't let them talk me into this. And it brought out the fight. And so the fight is what is going to make you happen. The fight is why you need to be a warrior. The fight is why you don't let somebody tell you that something happened. I wasn't always a strong person. I wasn't. And that's what I'm telling you. Because you're like, man, you know, she's, she's way different than I am. I was you. I was you. Okay? And I get it all the time. And that's part of being a team leader. And if you have a team that's not growing, are you their cheerleader? Are you their therapist? Are you not just a mentor? Are you inspiring them to be better? Okay? Because if you ain't working your business, if you're not going in that back office and buying jewelry, if you're not selling jewelry, why are you expecting somebody to follow you? If you don't inspire somebody, you know, if you are not an inspired person by somebody, how are you going to inspire somebody else? And how are you, you did them no good by having them sign up with you. Nothing. You did no good. I know that I am doing good because for the people that want this, the people that want to succeed at this, the people that want to succeed at life, I'm helping because they listen. If you don't listen, that's on you. You don't go to that therapist, that's on you. You don't take that risk out of fear, that's on you. You could have been home with your kids. You could have had financial freedom. I took a big risk doing this. And I'm gonna tell you, there were many nights that I looked at my husband and I cried and said, I give up. I am not gonna say that I was not feeling failure. And so, hi Ashley. So I'm not gonna say that I am the perfect of all perfect, okay, or anything like that. But what I did was the next morning, <clears throat> I analyzed what wasn't working, right? Well, I need to get more people than my lives. That was a big part of it. And then I was saying, why, what is preventing me? Like I'm looking at my shares and it was me not being me, right? The crown is me, right? That as soon as I put this crown on, it's like, I'm in my own zone. You and I are at a slumber party right now. Cause this crown, it's like, you know, the guy that couldn't cut his hair. It's like my hair, right? <clears throat> this crown is like, I'm having my time. This is me. And so I had to look and analyze it. And you have to look and analyze why you're not happy. Why you're still in a job that sucks. Why you don't have more time with your kids. Why you and your husband aren't getting along. And number one, before, always put the fault on you first. Because that's something we never want to do is blame us. And hello, Annabelle. And that is something that we really need to do, okay? So, I can tell you this. I will be live Sunday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Michael will post the link to my mobile text alerts. It will be a jewelry sale. I will only be doing one live a week. It will probably be an eight-hour live. I And I'll, I'll give you two an example. So, like, you guys know that I had this live before I left. I had an eight-hour live. Yep, eight hours. So people say, how do you do that? I can only go for an hour and a half. Did you work a job? Did you work eight hours? Then you can do an eight hour live, <laughs> you know? So after the live, we had 112 packages waiting for shipment. I go into my basement because we're leaving in three days to, to go on this cruise. And I am looking at my husband and, and he goes, are you going to ship? I go, yeah, I gotta go ship, right? No, I will not be at EMP Maryland. So, when uh, 
when this happened, I so I go down and I'm thinking, okay, if I start shipping right now, which I ended at like 12 o'clock at night, if I start shipping right now, then I will be able to get myself under 50 orders by the time people wake up to pay the rest of their invoices. And so, <laughs> it's so funny. At uh, six in the morning, after I had already shipped 50 orders, I had 122 orders, right? And so, I, my friend that helps me came over and she looked at me, she goes, have you been up all night? And I said, yeah. And, I, and she says, okay. She goes, you know, she stayed until five o'clock. She was, aren't you gonna go to bed? We couldn't get under a hundred orders, not the whole day. And so then I worked all night shipping too, right? So I stayed up for two whole nights to get out all the packages. And in my mind, for the people that are saying, gee, I wish I had sales like you. I wish I had viewers like you. And I thought in my mind, when you get this many sales, are you gonna be the person that stays up two nights to ship it? Then no. You don't want viewers like me or sales like me because that's what goes with it. And so we have to be understanding of what we really want. We have to get out of the zone. I will not be at EMP Atlanta due to the nature of, and I strongly always encourage everyone to go to EMP. However, because the cruise was so close to when EMP was, when usually the vacation is in the beginning of the year, um, I knew coming back from the cruise that Michael would be done. He would be completely a uh, soup sandwich is what I like to call it because he's just knocked out. And so I didn't try to push doing so. Had the cruise been the first week of January, absolutely, I would have been. Um, I will be at convention. I highly suggest you guys go to convention. If any of you have thought about signing up, we have an awesome special right now. Uh, it is the best incentive they offer all year. The large kit, you get 50 free pieces. That is basically giving you half of your kit cost back for free. And you also get a convention ticket in it, which as of tomorrow will be worth $195. So actually it's Saturday. And it's Saturday they go up in price. Um, I love what I do and I have changed. I do not, I, I have sold over $500,000 in jewelry last year. And I do not need the sales. I don't need to be number one to feel good about myself. And so I choose this year to develop my team and to get them where they need to be for their goals, right? So no, I won't, Liz. It was very close. And I, I looked at it when the cruise came out. And then when they announced EMP dates, I knew I would not be able to attend. I won't. So if anybody is thought about signing up, I urge you to make a decision based off of your brain. It's a business, not off of your heart or your fears that somebody's not going to like you, right? Um, we don't have to give you anything, and I give everything to my team. So I thank all of you guys for coming here. Like I said, I do have an awesome vintage show. I love the vintage shows, and it'll probably be vintage shows for the next few months. Like, I have so many vintage pieces that it's ridiculous, right, that will be on the show. A lot of them I do have multiples of. I've been a consultant for almost two and a half years. Um, this will be my share prize. Michael will post the link to text alerts in the comments here as soon as we're done. And then I also have a bring a friend prize, right? You bring a friend and they share the show and there'll be more than this, but this is one of the bring a friend prizes. So I want to have multiple chances because we had a lot of people bring friends, you know? So that is just one of them. And if you have not watched me before, you can harder like this video and I can invite you to like my business page. You can give me a thumbs up. You can laugh at me if you want. Um, but I thank you guys for spending this time with me and anything that I can give back to help somebody to not go through the things that I went through or to pull themselves out of that rut and not be a victim anymore, I want to do and, and help you guys progress, all right? Thank you so much for, for joining me today and hopefully I see you guys on Sunday. Bye-bye.